Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, we will continue with our lecture series for optimal control guidance and estimation. Last lecture we have seen LQR or linear quadratic regulator design development and as I told in the last class, we will continue several lectures on this topic. This is one of the very popular optimal control techniques as well as a technique which is already implemented in industry and all that. It has its own importance, so we will give its due importance in about 3-4 lectures actually. So, this particular lecture, I want to cover some of these. First, a very brief summary of uh, this LQR design, what we discussed in the last class. Then, we will uh, formally prove the stability nature of the closed loop system in with an LQR control. So, that will be uh, through Lyapunov theory and all that. So, but, but formal proof will give actually. Then, uh, as a byproduct, we will also be able to say what is the optimum value of the cost function in an infinite time problem actually. Okay, and that is the that is kind of closely linked to each other. Basically, we'll see that. Okay. Then we'll have some couple of uh, extensions of this LQR design, and you can see the literature. There are there are quite a few extensions possible actually. Okay, but we are not going to talk uh, everything. But we'll give a few extensions, which will kind of give you confidence that you can. Given a problem, you can probably uh, read, understand, and probably develop yourself as well actually. So, uh, those things will, uh, I mean this uh, 4 or 5 examples that we will give or extensions that we will discuss here, first term is the cross product term in the cost function and uh, that is something like uh, x transpose u sort of thing, if you, if you have that kind of thing then what you do. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there is a rate of state, uh, rate of state minimization that means, uh, you want to minimize x dot, similarly rate of control minimization, you want to minimize u dot term. And, uh, if there is also an extension which talks about some prescribed degree of stability, how do you assure that actually. Okay. So, uh, this kind of things we will we'll discuss in this particular lecture. We will also follow it up with uh, the formulation for command tracking okay, as well as for, uh, formulation for inhomogeneous system. That means, if you have x dot equal to x plus b u plus c, then uh, that is called inhomogeneous system because when x and u are 0, x dot is also 0, I mean uh, yeah, sorry, when x and u are 0, then x dot is still c basically. So, that kind of things uh, are called inhomogeneous systems and all that. We will see the, all these extensions in this class actually. So, first a brief summary okay, of this LQR design, what we discussed in the last class. The performance index uh, in this LQR formulation is something like this. You have uh, half x f transpose s f x f which is the total thing is phi of x f plus integral t naught to t f uh, half of uh, this thing okay, this x transpose q x plus u transpose r u. Several things we discussed last class that r s to be positive definite q s to be positive semi definite s f s to be positive semi definite like that and there are some guidelines about uh, selecting of s f q and r all those things we discussed. And there is also a fundamental requirement of a and b pair has to be controllable as well as uh, a and square root of q that pair has to be detectable or in, in general observable actually. Okay. So, the, uh, this is the performance index that we want to minimize uh, subject to the path constraint uh, x dot equal to x plus v u is a system dynamics for linear systems and then followed by boundary conditions where x of 0 is x 0 which is assumed to be specified t f is fixed and x of, x of t f is uh, free basically. So, those kind of formulation we discussed in the last class. So, now uh, went back and then uh, started with this Hamiltonian definition phi, f, phi of x f definition like that. So, phi of x f is very naturally like this and Hamiltonian is uh, L plus lambda transpose f and L turns out to be this one okay, and f turns out to be this one. So, L okay, plus lambda transpose x plus v u. So, we are ready now to apply our necessary conditions of optimality uh, which is steady equation which is x dot equal to well del h by del lambda which is nothing but uh, x plus v u okay, f of x u basically. So, x dot equal to x plus uh, v u then we have this co-state equation lambda dot equal to minus del h by del x which is minus q x plus a transpose lambda 
Then we have optimal control equation which is nothing but uh, del s by del u equal to 0 which leads to this u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. We all derived this actually last class. Then finally, the boundary condition turns out to be lambda f equal to del f by del x f and phi of x f is this one. So, we can do this partial derivative and tell s f lambda f has to be s f x f. Then motivated by this uh, uh, I mean this expression where that t equal to t f lambda, lambda is a linear function of x f. Uh, so, and as well as some other arguments, so we uh, happen. I mean, we assume that uh, how about uh, how about lambda of t is something like a linear function of x of t at every point of time. That linear dependency can be different. That means p of t can be actually a time varying function, a uh, time varying matrix rather. Uh, but uh, it is uh, we at every point of time we still have this linear relationship also actually. Okay. Then we went back and okay, it applied these conditions, whatever conditions we have, state equation, co-state equation and optimal control equation. And we started with uh, differentiating this, this expression what we have. So, lambda dot turns out to be like that, x dot we substituted as system dynamics. Then u we substituted as uh, this, this expression, where lambda is again substituted as p times x actually. Okay. So, we have then lambda dot was nothing but this expression minus q x minus i transpose lambda, where lambda is nothing but again p times x. So, we putting all together and bringing everything to left hand side and assuming uh, that x is not equal to 0 and this expression is valid for infinite uh, combinations of x and all that. So, we can tell that coefficient has to be 0. So, this essentially leads to this uh, this Riccati equation which is essentially a differential equation, differential matrix equation rather with a boundary condition popping up from this boundary condition. Okay. So, you have lambda f is p f x f which is equal to s f x f. So, p f turns out to be something like uh, s f actually. So, what we told is okay, we start with this boundary condition and we have a differential equation for uh, for this Riccati matrix uh, anyway. So, we can uh, back propagate it okay, from t f to t naught and then from uh, p of t at t for all t belonging to t naught to t f uh, is available. Okay. Once p of t is available, then we can calculate lambda of t and once lambda of t is available, we can calculate this u of t. Okay. So, u is available for lambda. So, on the, on the way we also observe that okay, by Kalman's theorem, when T f goes to infinity uh, for constant q, R, q and R matrices, P dot happens to be 0 for all T. So, that means uh, this equation what we have uh, as, as a differential equation, it boils down to an algebraic equation and this is what is popularly used all over the place. And by default, if T f, T f is not mentioned, then it is assumed that T f goes to infinity. So, this is the way to solve, but this we do not need to propagate anything, but still it is a nonlinear uh, matrix uh, equation which needs to be solved actually. But there are efficient algorithms available because this, uh, this equation is heavily studied. So, once you get a solution either this way or that way okay, at uh, p of t, then we have this control ready which is u equal to minus r inverse b transpose uh, lambda, where lambda is p times x. So, combining this p to this side, you can tell that okay, there is a gain matrix uh, r inverse b transpose b and hence u equal to minus k x, where k is nothing but r inverse b transpose b. Okay. So, this is the whole summary of the LQR design actually. All right. So, with this uh, idea or with this uh, knowledge, we will proceed further and first we saw stability of the closed loop system in, uh, in LQR actually. So, and remember all the, when, when I am not talking anything about finite time, infinite time, these are all uh, we will do discussions based on infinite time formulation actually. All right. So, we have a closed loop system x dot equal to x plus v u which is nothing but that okay. and a Lyapunov function v, v of x is x transpose v x. Okay. So, v dot of x is nothing but uh, x transpose v x plus uh, x transpose uh, p times x dot. Remember we are talking about infinite time. So, that means uh, p is a constant matrix actually. Okay. So, that p dot is not involved per se. Yeah. So, we have x dot equal to x plus b u again. So, substitute that x dot equal to this expression okay, a minus b k times x. So, I can substitute it here a my x dot is nothing but a times b k a minus b k okay, times x whole transpose p x plus x transpose p times x dot again. So, x dot is nothing but a minus b k x. So, we substitute back here. Okay. So, that results to like if I expand this uh, transpose and that results to x transpose a minus b k transpose times p. Okay. So, that you can substitute it back here where k you know that uh, k sorry okay, we have k is nothing but this r inverse b transpose p. Okay. So, that you can substitute back here okay, r inverse b transpose p is nothing but the k basically. 
ok. So, this similar thing this is also k. So, we substitute back and then expand it fully ok and then do this uh, plus q minus q thing here ok. Okay. Once you do this plus q minus q, it you can observe that one part of the equation is nothing but the Ricard equation actually. Okay. So, then this uh, this uh, this being the Ricard equation, so obviously this this part of the equation will go to 0 okay. and you will be left out with uh, the rest of the term actually. So, what is this? Now, b dot you can is nothing but this expression actually. This is remember this is already in quadratic form. So, all that we need to show and this is fortunately there is a negative sign in both the expressions actually. So, we take out the negative sign and uh, all that we need to show is uh, this v dot needs to be negative definite function. See these are all uh, Lyapunov theory based argument sort of thing. So, we start with a positive definite p that is our Lyapunov function so, that means v of x is a positive definite function ok and we need to show that v dot is a negative definite function ok. So, that is another reason why we need to select uh, positive definite pre pump I mean p have may have a multiple solution in this Ricard equation, but we need to select a p which is positive definite actually. Uh, anyway, so this this being a positive definite, so this is a positive definite function and v dot turns out to be this expression uh, with if I take the minus sign out it will turns out to be q plus this expression p v r inverse v transpose v actually. Now, we can already see that q is a positive semi definite matrix ok. So, if q is a positive semi definite matrix ok, what about this expression? You remember r is a positive definite matrix. So, r inverse is also positive definite. Remember if a, if a matrix has eigen values lambdas, then uh, its inverse is 1 by, 1 by lambda is eigen values. So, if uh, all these eigen values are positive for r, then r inverse also will have positive eigen values actually. Now, this expression you can see b, b times b transpose ok that is a quadratic expression sort of thing and this is positive p is already a positive definite matrix ok. So, this will lead essentially lead to this this uh, entire matrix p v r inverse v transpose p is a positive definite matrix actually. So, you have a positive definite matrix and negative that of negative that is a negative definite and minus q is also there ok. So, that means that is negative semi definite. So, the total expression becomes something like negative definite matrix actually. Okay. This is all explained here uh, same thing what I told ok. For R uh, this notation what you see here is not just greater than 0 these are not scalar quantities these R is a matrix. So, by uh, symbolically it means R is a positive definite matrix. So, R inverse is also a positive definite matrix P is also a positive definite matrix. So, this happens to be a positive definite matrix and Q is a positive semi definite matrix. So, the combination of that is, is a positive definite matrix and hence negative of that happens to be negative definite matrix. So, v dot happens to be negative definite and by Lyapunov's theorem ok direct theorem actually that if v of x is a, is a positive definite function and, uh, and v dot of x happens to be a negative definite function then the closed loop system is always asymptotically stable ok. And this is this being a linear system and this is the like if you can extend further these are all radially unbounded systems uh, I mean radially unbounded function and things like that. And so, essentially it happens to be globally asymptotically stable ok. So, that kind of thing, but also remember we are all talking about uh, linearized system or uh, linear system certifically linearized system. So, for the linearized system the linearization is valid in a, in a, log, in a local neighborhood anyway. So, what you are talking here is uh, it is globally asymptotically stable for the linear system I mean not for the original nonlinear system actually. So, just keep that in mind as a, as a side comment sort of thing, but as far as linear system is concerned uh, if you apply LQR you will have global asymptotic stability guarantee basically and uh, also it turns out that because of this expression this nature x dot equal to this is something like a closed loop matrix ok times x. So, you can talk about x of t is nothing but it e to the power a minus b k into t times x 0. So, that is the solution. So, essentially it turns out to be exponentially stable also basically. So, it is the strongest notion of stability in all linear systems theory it satisfies actually. Okay, so, it is globally exponentially stable sort of thing actually, but anyway. So, this is uh, uh, I mean more on that if somebody is interested what to see what not to see and all that actually in the Lyapunov theory. I encourage my other course which is already available in NPTEL program itself actually this is uh, advanced control systems theory where I have discussed about 2 3 lectures on Lyapunov theory actually. So, you can uh, see that for details on that actually ok. Anyway, so the summary is you have v of x, we have one v of x which is positive definite for which v dot of x tends to be negative definite. Hence, by Lyapunov's uh, direct theorem on sufficiency condition and all, 
it turns out that the closed loop system is always asymptotically stable and hence it is globally asymptotically stable because this is a radially unbounded function and all and it is also exponentially stable. Okay, so, there is a very strong notion of stability actually. All right, so, this stability there, so what about the minimum value of the cost function, is it possible to estimate that? So, uh, now we can go back and see this value of the cost function is nothing but that, this is T naught to infinity remember, we are talking about infinite cost functions here, the infinite time problems here. So, J equal to this half of T naught to infinity all this expression. Now, u you substitute as uh, minus R inverse B transpose B times X, so that is the expression for u okay, and this is u transpose. So, you expand that again, okay, x transpose q x from this side and x transpose, okay, p is a symmetric matrix, so p transpose is p okay, and then b, okay, b transpose transpose is b, then r inverse coming from here. So, essentially you have uh, this expression, on the, I mean if you, if you expand this expression, you have this x transpose, um, uh, then p transpose which is p, then b transpose transpose which is b, then r inverse transpose, so that is R is also a symmetric matrix, so R inverse transpose is R inverse okay, times R times this matrix what you have here actually. Okay. So, it turns out that okay, this, this is identity, okay, we can talk about taking it out and hence we, left, we are left out with uh, this expression okay, half of x transpose q, q coming from here and then x transpose here x is there, so that goes out. Then you have this P, B. R inverse P B R inverse B transpose okay, P. Okay, so this expression actually. But what is it? I mean, this expression what you have here is nothing but our V dot. V dot is negative of that actually. So minus V dot happens to be that. Basically. So we put it uh, that expression. So this is minus V dot. So so integration of T naught to infinity minus V dot times dt. Remember this is dv by dt sort of thing actually. Okay. So, this this integration and differentiation will cancel out and we are left out with this V half of V T naught to infinity and this is minus half of X transpose P because X transpose P X because V is that that one, we selected that actually. So, put it back uh, and then it is T naught to infinity. So, we evaluate it actually. So, X, X naught uh, transpose times uh, P times X naught minus X infinity transpose P times X infinity. But we just proven just this is asymptotically stable, it is always asymptotically stable. That means x of infinity is equal to 0 basically. So, that be that term vanishes and you are left out with that. Okay. That means if you just know the initial condition and the Riccati matrix solution, you straight away have a value of the cost function actually. It really, I mean, uh, if you operate based on that, you are supposed to get this. And probably this expression will also help you in cross validating your results or kind of verifying your results and all that actually. Okay. So, this is the minimum value of the cost function and now some extensions of LQR design, okay. this is uh, I mean LQR procedure we know by now and infinite time procedure is also we know, we, uh, we are guaranteed to have uh, globally asymptotic stability for linear systems, stability theorem we proved and minimum value of the cost function also we derived actually. Okay. Now, we see some extensions of LQR theory, okay, LQR design. Now, let us see one by one actually. So, the first thing is the cross product term in performance index. So, remember for originally we had the performance index x transpose q u plus u transpose r u. We did not have a cross product term something like this x transpose w u. Okay. So, this w is, is almost also like a weighting matrix sort of thing, but remember that x and u are not of same dimension. That means, w need not be a square matrix actually. Okay. So, with this expression let us analyze uh, how do we do that and uh, the whole idea here is we can always go back to this Hamiltonian and try to derive the necessary condition and try, try from the beginning and uh, and proceed further uh, as we proceeded before, but that, that turns out to be not necessary actually. If we manipulate this expressions a little bit then with existing solutions uh, available we can actually solve this problem as well. Now, how do you do that? Okay. Now, just uh, see this expression whatever you have and then let us start with this expression. Okay. So, if, if you st somebody starts with this uh, this big expression and you try to simplify, so this first term will be x transpose q times x, the first term over here is u transpose r times u 
and some of the terms and all will cancel out and you will be left out with this, this term actually. Okay. And then ultimately it turns out that this is nothing but x transpose q x and mine see this, this one is a scalar ultimately this all these things are individually scalar quantities. So, the same expression times its own transpose is equal to that actually. Any time the matrix multiplication is a scalar quantity, you know that a scalar transpose is a scalar value in itself. So, we can tell that okay, this expression x transpose w whole transpose okay, is equal to x transpose w. So, whatever we have th this expression is a transpose of that. So, we can tell that this is nothing but same thing as that. So, that turns out to be 2 times this actually. So, that means, we whatever expression we had here we can actually substitute by this long hand expression actually. Now, somebody can ask me I mean how did you get it and all. So, this this are typically does not happen overnight, uh, but uh, but the idea here turns out to be in the reverse direction. You start with this expression here okay, and this is now easy because you can talk about uh, two terms like that and one of the one term you keep it as it is, the other term you take a transpose of that. So, coming from third line to second line is rather very easy actually. But here we do a little bit more manipulation. We add and add and subtract a term. You try out, uh, I mean, couple of times, and then finally you end up with this expression actually. So the, this turns out to be a big, big end expression. But let's assume that it is. It can be done actually. Yeah. Now what do you see here? What do, if you just look at it a little bit closely? I mean, closely, we have a quadratic expression here. Okay, x transpose something into x transpose, and we also have a quadratic expression here. That means some expression. Okay, some vector transpose times r times the same vector. So, that means, we have a quadratic expression here and a quadratic expression here actually. Okay. So, that turns, uh, turns out to be an advantage actually. How? Because we can actually define this as a some sort of a new control variable okay. and then we will have a direct expression actually. So, now, go, let us go back and, and substitute it here. Instead of this expression, what you have? We will substitute that actually in the cost function. So, we substitute it. Okay and z turns out to be half of t naught infinity and we substitute all that and this turns out to be a u 1 expression. Okay. So, this u 1 expression turns out to be e, I mean uh, it is available we put it uh, something like okay, there is a small type of mistake again here this u 1 transpose. Okay. Anyway, so this uh, this expression what you have here okay, is nothing but x transpose q x, but we will substitute by x transpose this this term. Q minus W R inverse W transpose X actually. So, that is what it is here. So, we define this matrix as something like a Q 1 matrix and define this vector as something like U 1 vector. Okay. So, we will end up with uh, this half of X transpose Q 1 X plus U transpose R U uh, 1 transpose R times U 1. It now turns out to be I mean looks very familiar to what we had actually. But wait a second, we had do not have a cost, uh, I mean we do not have a system dynamics in uh, in terms of u 1 basically. So, we have to manipulate a little bit here and tell okay, if, if my u 1 is defined to be something like this, okay, this expression, this is my u 1, then I can actually see this u I can substitute from there, okay, u equal to u 1 minus this expression. So, this is what is what is substituted here. Okay. And then what you have here is uh, something like you combine these two terms you have a minus b times r inverse w transpose coming this side times x plus b u 1. So, that means, uh, if you define this as something like a 1 matrix, what we have is x dot equal to a 1 times x plus b u 1. So, you have a system dynamics in the form of uh, linear system dynamics x dot equal to a 1 x plus b u 1 and the cost function is also available to us in the modified form which is x transpose uh, q 1 x plus u transpose r u 1 actually that kind of thing. So, now this from this uh, cost function and this uh, the system dynamics are both compatible. Okay. So, we can use this a 1 b and q 1 r matrices in the Riccardi equation and solve a gain matrix actually solve for a Riccardi matrix and then you, uh, we compute the gain matrix. So, essentially this control will be available, but remember this control what you are talking is u 1 not u. Okay. So, u 1 will be minus k times x, but we know once we have u 1 you can also recover u from there u is nothing but u 1 times that actually that is what you have substituted here. So, once you have u 1 then you can get u, u is nothing but that. So, you have a gain matrix k calculated using this a 1 matrix b and q 1 matrix r and then using that gain matrix and then doing this little algebra here we got the actual gain matrix for u basically. Okay. 
So, this little manipulation of algebra uh, saves a lot of uh, uh, I mean this necessary conditions out of algebra and all that actually you do not need that actually that way. Alright, so this is our first experience, first uh, extension with cross product term. What about the kind of uh, well uh, weightage on I mean second experience extension where we talk about uh, weightage on the rate of state. That means, we initially we talked about x transpose q x plus u transpose r u, but sometimes it is necessary to minimize x dot also basically you do not want the system dynamics to change very fast actually. There may be other ramifications for that, there may be some safety issues, there may be some as if the temperature is there and you want to pump in some heat and then you can if you pump too much of heat then probably this x dot becomes very high and then material may melt all sort of things are there actually. So, many applications are there where we really do not want this x dot to develop as fast as possible or even decay as fast as possible. We have a smooth decay or smooth rise sort of thing actually. So, in those situation we like to have a minimization of that, uh, but remember the here S is a symmetric matrix because the I mean it is a square matrix as, as well as a symmetric matrix sort of thing actually. Okay. And typically when you see this kind of term, uh, it is also assumed that it is at least positive semi definite matrix basically, okay, so that the cost function remains convex actually. Okay. Anyway, so if that is the case, then how do we go, how do we go about actually? Okay. The, the idea to go about is something like this, you have x dot, no, so x dot you have a x plus v u, so substitute that, okay. so x dot is a x plus v u. Okay. So, we have this uh, j which is x transpose q x plus u transpose r u plus the all this a x plus b u transpose s into a x plus b u. Okay. Alright, so, if, the, if that is the case then you have this half of all this x transpose q x u transpose r u plus all these actually. Okay. So, x transpose a transpose s times a coming from here and then all other terms this, this will essentially 2 plus 2. So, 4 terms will generate and all these 4 terms are given here actually. Okay. So, now you so you collect this uh, let us say we collect this x transpose x sort of term. So, we have one term here and one more term here. So, we can put it here and u transpose u sort of thing. So, we can put it here u transpose u is r from, from here and u transpose u some other thing coming from here. Okay. So, we have this x transpose this times x plus u transpose this times u basically okay. plus Okay, 2 x transpose this this one okay, a transpose s b times u basically. So, all these things we can put it back here. Okay. All right. So, essentially this uh, this leads to a cross product case because we have a term like this okay, 2 times x transpose w u. So, that that term will give you something like this. So, we essentially define this uh, this matrix as q 1, this matrix as r 1 and you can define this matrix as w. So, essentially with this cost function j turns out to be if this form x transpose q 1 x plus u plus u transpose r 1 u plus 2 times x transpose w u. Okay. So, this expression what we have here okay. essentially we can see that we have a quadratic term in x, quadratic term in u, but also a term with a cross product thing. That means, with whatever we just discussed here okay, this this term the it leads to that, but now we know how to how to solve how to solve a cross product term case actually. Okay. If you have a cross product, how do we deal with that? We know it actually, just now we discuss all that actually. Okay. So, this type of thing can be handled, that is not a problem at all actually. Okay. So, now what about extension number 3? Okay. So, we now we talk about uh, what about uh, control rate minimization basically. Okay. We do not want to apply too much of uh, control, I mean we do not want to see too much of uh, uh, build up of control rate basically and this is a very critical parameter because uh, if you talk about anything the any control the real energy spent is through u dot actually. Okay. In other words, if you have a fin deflection of missiles or, or aircraft and things like that, then the way to deflect control surface is through motor actually. So, that means, the whenever there is a u dot term, there is a current draws I mean uh, usage of current actually. So, if u dot is high the current run is also high that means, the uh, all energy stored in the battery will go will drain out very fast and essentially this is also kind of preventing this chattering problems and things like that. If your chattering is remember high fluctuate high uh, fluctuating oscillation sort of thing. So, that means, we have this u dot term very high basically. Okay. So, anyway, so there are a lot of uh, practical applications where we purposefully want to minimize u dot also basically. 
So, how do you handle that? And in this particular case, remember our R hat matrix has to be positive definite actually. Okay. So, how do you do that? Uh, now, one way to do that is uh, let us say you define some other variable, let us say capital X is uh, x and u put together in a vector actually. Okay. So, that uh, that is uh, my I mean that is our uh, big uh, vector state big state vector capital X x and u put together. Okay. Then uh, it, it turns out that uh, v I mean you can also define some, some auxiliary variable v which is nothing but u dot actually. Okay. So, uh, now you can see that if I if I do that then uh, this um, cost function j we can write it this way okay. x transpose this capital X transpose this matrix times capital X plus V transpose R at times V basically. Okay. So, essentially if I define this as uh, Q hat okay, then I have this j equal to x transpose uh, Q hat x plus V transpose uh, R at V. Okay. But uh, I mean you also remember that we have a system dynamics to get over and system dynamics turns out to be like that you have x dot equal to x plus B u and u dot equal to v. That means, if you see that in a capital X formulation then this turns out to be like this. That means, this big X dot or capital X dot turns out to be A hat X plus V hat V where A hat is defined something like this and V hat is defined something like this. Okay. All right. So, then uh, first thing to note is the dimension of the problem has increased from n to n plus m. Remember n is the state number of states and m is the number of control actually. So, uh, we have put it together. So, the big capital X dimension is n plus m actually. Okay. And it is it's fortunately it can be shown that if pair a b is controllable, okay, the original a b is controllable, then a hat and v hat is also controllable. Okay. So, that is uh, in a, a very important and interesting observation actually. Okay. Now, what the message here is we have a system dynamics x, x dot equal to a, a hat x plus v hat v and a cost function also in the quadratic form. Okay. So, we can actually go back and, in, and use our LQR theory and hence we tell that the control solution remember this the control is actually v what you are talking here that is the control variable. So, v is nothing but minus r hat inverse v hat transpose p hat times x where p hat is the solution of this Riccati equation all that actually. Or remember what is v? v is nothing but u dot. So, u dot turns out to be something like this and x at this point of time I can split my x, x is nothing but x and u and tell ok corresponding matrices and all that I will take it and I can write it this way. Okay. So, u dot equal to minus r, r hat inverse p 1 2 transpose the x minus r hat inverse p 2 2 hat times u all this coming from this algebra actually. So, what is it? Now, if you see this, this is actually a differential equation u dot equal to something times x and uh, minus something times u. So, that is actually a differential equation that means, it is a dynamic equation. It is not easy for implementation and it is prone to error also. That means, any initial condition uh, in see this does not talk about initial condition on u. So, any any error initial condition is supposed to propagate also basically. Does not matter that much, but uh, a typically a dynamic controller is never good because there is some degree of uh, kind of open loop nature in that actually. Okay. So, we do not want it, we want to operate it in kind of a closed loop some way basically. So, one way to do that is okay, we will go back to this uh, steady equation and you see that okay, if this is the case then u can be solved as something some like this where b is plus is nothing but the pseudo inverse actually. And uh, this point of time probably it, uh, it makes sense to I mean kind of uh, revise a little bit or you, uh, I have seen that I mean we have discussed about that okay. in, in lecture number 2 actually okay, way back. So, when you discuss this matrix theory and all that we discuss those things and let me just quickly grab it. So, this is what we discussed that point of time. If we have x equal to b and m equal to n determinant a is not 0 then is a unique solution and all we know that for sure. And what about m is less than n that means, uh, what you are talking here. Okay is something like x is n dimensional and, uh, and the number of constraint is m dimensional actually. Okay. So, if I have number of constraint is less than number of uh, free variable that means, it is under constraint problem then then you can some do something like this. We want to minimize this norm of x in other words we want to find minimum norm solution subject to this constraint and solution turns out to be pseudo inverse where pseudo inverse is given like that. But this is remember this is under constraint problem. What about over constraint problem? If you are if, if the constraints are something like this, then we can uh, we can do something like this, j equal to like that. 
in other words it does not satisfy this equation exactly a x plus a is equal to b, but we want to kind of desperately attempt to kind of minimize this this uh, error a x equal to b. So, a x minus b error minimization sort of thing. If you do that it turns out that the solution is nothing but a transfer a, a pseudo inverse b again, but this time it is a left pseudo inverse that uh, that was a right pseudo inverse actually. So, these kind of things we discussed. So, what it turns out in our uh, uh, class here that one can always do this okay. and remember uh, typically u is of lesser dimension than x that means this will always uh, left turn out to be left pseudo inverse not very good, but uh, okay, in some sense it is it is close to that I mean close to what it should be actually. And as, as long as this uh, number of control is uh, equal to or greater than number of states then it is uh, very much correct actually there is nothing wrong in that. Yeah. But unfortunately, we will not have that case most of the time that is a different case. Anyway, so this is actually an approximate solution. So, let us uh, not bother too much into that, but we can put it back here. So, we put this u whatever you, you see here with this expression b pseudo inverse x dot minus a x. So, we will end up with u dot equal to all that essentially it tells out that u dot can be expressed in the form of minus k 1. So, this is my this is our k 1 x dot and k 2 x ok. This is a, again a small type of mistake here the brackets will somewhat uh, they will end here actually. So, this this part is your k 1 and this part is actually ok is k 2 basically ok. So, we we have this. So, this is k 1 times x dot minus of minus k 1 times x dot minus k 2 times x actually. So, now we can integrate both sides ok the in time and you can have this uh, u equal to minus k 1 x minus k 2 times integral of x plus u naught which is an initial condition actually. Okay. Now, u naught can be obtained using a performance index without u, u dot term we know that right. If you if you performance index does not contain any u dot term then you have a different gain u equal to minus k x that means, uh, for x naught u, u naught is minus k times x naught actually. So, that is available. Okay. So, using this expression you can get an expression for u and what kind of this? This is a proportional term and this is an integral term. So, essentially it leads to this this p i control sort of ideas actually okay. some gain times a proportional term okay, and some gain times an integral term actually. Okay. So, we will end up with uh, this p i control actually. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, all about this uh, rate of control and all that actually. Now, the last extension is this uh, prescribed degree of stability and all that actually. Okay, remember the very uh, I mean some time back in this lecture we talked about uh, this control is uh, asymptotically stabilizing ok it lead to asymptotic stability behavior. But asymptotic stability stability behavior means the all the eigenvalues are bounded away from the j omega axis ok that is the imaginary axis which is ok there is nothing wrong in that. But as far as the robustness behavior is concerned that means if the eigenvalues are too close to this imaginary axis then the real eigenvalues for the actual system uh, there is a danger that it may go to the right hand side actually. So, we want some design which will at least assure some sort of a alpha margin from the j omega axis that means all the eigenvalues are supposed to lie left of left side of the a b line which is separated away from the j omega axis by amount alpha actually ok. So, can we do that and it turns out to be yes you can you can do that by how do you do that by taking a cost function in this the in this form actually ok e to the power 2 alpha t and I will also show why it should happen actually ok. So, now we we'll imagine that ok this is possible then uh, what is what it can lead to because remember e to the power 2 alpha t is nothing but e to the power alpha t into e to the power alpha t and e to the power alpha t is a scalar quantity ok. So, we can we can manipulate this algebra like this. So, we will have e to the power alpha t times x times uh, transpose times q times all that plus e to the power alpha t times u times transpose r u to all that each other ok. So, this j equal to all this and then e to the power alpha t times x turns out to be x tilde we define it like that x to j e to the power alpha t times x and u tilde is e to the power alpha t times u ok. So, this is nothing but our coordinate transformation actually ok. All right. So, this uh, this coordinate uh, using this coordinate transformation this turns out to be a quadratic function in terms of x tilde and u tilde basically ok. Now, what about system dynamics again we can uh, go back and think uh, ok x tilde dot uh, is what 
Okay, x tilde is like that. So, x tilde dot happens to be something like this e to the power alpha t into x dot plus the derivative of that that is alpha times e to the power alpha t into x actually and again x dot you put substitute back okay. and then it turns out that you can write a to the power a times e to the power alpha t into x and remember e to the power alpha t is a scalar quantity. So, you can take it right side and similarly you can write it b times this this, this expression e to the power alpha t into u plus alpha times all this actually. Okay. So, when you see this okay, these two terms you can combine now okay. you can combine and then remember x tilde is nothing but your e to the power alpha t into x. So, that can be combined actually. So, a plus e alpha i coming from here times this is x tilde okay, plus b times u tilde basically. So, we have x tilde dot is nothing but a plus alpha, alpha i into x tilde, x tilde plus b times u tilde basically. So, you have a quadratic cost function now in terms of x tilde u tilde and you have a system dynamics in terms of x tilde u tilde as well actually. So, you can go ahead and find the control solution and control solution can be obtained using a Riccati matrix so considering this as a matrix this as b and then q and r or q and r actually. And then once you have a control solution gain k then the control is u tilde is nothing but u to the power minus k into x tilde where well, u tilde is that and x tilde is that and these are all scalar quantity again and they will never go to 0 also. Okay. E to the power alpha t never goes to 0 only when t goes to if alpha is positive if t goes to in minus infinity it happens to be 0 actually or if alpha uh, I mean uh, that never arises anyway. So, we can cancel this out and have, have the same gain actually e equal to minus k x. Okay. The only difference is Riccati matrix is computed based on this a rather than the other way. I mean rather than the original A, all other things remain same, B remains B, Q remains Q, R remains R actually. Okay. Just that the system dynamics get perturbed a little bit there actually. Now, somebody can argue how does it guarantee this what we wanted. Okay. Now, it turns out to be not that difficult. So, we have this actual system and the closed loop system given something like this. The modified system is something like this with a modified closed loop system is something like this. Okay. So, LQR system uh, it will guarantee asymptotic stability for this system. Okay. So, that means all the eigenvalues of uh, this matrix what you see are guaranteed to remain left out of the imaginary axis. And if you carry out the algebra it and uh, for this eigenvalue and this eigenvalue okay, that means if all the eigenvalues of this are uh, I mean, so it actually have a real part. Okay. Uh, some real part whatever that is and this this real part if you compute eigenvalues of the real part you can see very I mean you can see easily that the real part of the eigenvalues will be pushed by alpha actually. Okay. So, this algebra you can uh, do it uh, yourself probably. The core point is the, the design assures that all the eigenvalues of this matrix are left hand side left top of S plane and hence eigenvalues of this only okay, a minus b k will remain left left side of this uh, this line a b which is separated by alpha actually. Okay. All right, so, that is that is how it is actually. Now, the next one which I want to talk is how do we use LQR design for command tracking let us say. Okay. That means, uh, so far you have been discussing about stability and all the dictionary. Now, suppose there is a r of t which is comes as a command for a class of problems and how do you handle that. So, here we talk about a problem something like this, we have, we have our aim is to design a new such that a part of the state vector of the linear system that means x dot equal to x plus b u what we have here is state vector a part of that tracks a commanded reference signal R c. Okay, okay. In other words, if I if I split this x vector to x t and x n that means, track state and non track states and all that then the objective here is x t should, uh, should track R c basically. Okay. All right. So, how do we uh, go ahead and uh, find a solution to this? Okay. Remember, uh, uh, Xn is non-track states. We really don't worry where they go and all that. Typically, if Xt goes to a tracking value, then Xn doesn't cause too much of a problem. If the problem formulation is good, okay. So that that kind of ideas there actually. So we they remain bounded in an indirect sense, even though they are not directly enforced and all that is that way. Okay. So, we do not uh, worry about that actually. Okay. So, uh, so, in that case what happens to this actually that way. Okay. So, we will uh, we will see that. 
Okay, now uh, what it turns out that uh, just because you want this x t to track something that means x t minus r c should go to 0, we should have a term for q t t. Okay, q can be split into this uh, partition matrix sort of thing. Okay, this is a partition matrix. Okay, a first uh, first uh, I mean this uh, first entry q t t okay, involves x t. So there is some term here, and other things can be taken as zero actually. Now it turns out that you can simply solve this problem using this q, and then implement the control like this. Instead of minus k times x, that means minus k times x t x n. You will tell minus k times x t minus r c, okay, x t minus r c, okay, and x n, okay. So that means uh, instead of simply feeding x t, x t, you will feed x t minus r c in the first component actually. So this is how you can see how this operates and uh, in a block diagram sense actually. So, this is a typical LQ regulation problem. Okay. You have this uh, x dot equal to x plus bu. So, a times x and x dot integrated over it will, will give you x. So, a times x okay, plus b times u coming from here that is x dot. So, that is how it is constructed and u is nothing but minus k times x. So, that is how it is. So, LQ tracking turns out to be something like that R, rc of t it is fed into that and hence if you x t and x n if you fit it here. Okay. Then it turns out to be like okay. In this junction, what you see here, x t is not x t, right? I mean, what you what you should should track R C basically. Okay. So if it is R C there, that uh, that happens to be this this block diagram actually. Okay. So you have this uh, addition subtraction because minus k is also there basically. In a way basically. So it should. I mean, somebody can argue R C minus x t, but there is a minus term here, so we can talk about x t minus R C basically. Okay. Okay, now this uh, this uh, loop. I mean, this uh, uh, is imp it works well. I mean, not it works fairly well, but uh, sometimes it gives steady state errors and things like that. So we to to nullify those effects. It is also advisable to substitute. I mean, to have some sort of integral feedback actually. So if you do that, then you can have this uh, this kind of a dynamics where x i dot is nothing but x t. Okay, i times x t and nothing else actually. Okay. So x i dot is x t means x i is nothing but integral of x t basically. Okay, so you can do that uh, and select the q matrix properly. That means uh, you have one more term here. So q t t will be there and something like a integral of q t t should term should also be there after the zero zero and all that actually. So you will have penalization for both uh, error as well as integral error actually. Okay. So once you do that, you can operate the controller based on this minus k times this t part. X n is anyway free, so you do not worry, but it is needed for feedback anyway, these are all state feedback systems. And then it is u equal to this this expression, this is your x i, okay. x i is nothing but x, x i uh, well in error, I mean what it turns out is x i is, is integral of x t, but you will have this x, x t minus r c integral basically. Okay. So, this will operate based on error integral rather than x i x t integral basically. Okay. So, error term and error integral term actually has to be there. So, this is how the control solution operates actually. Now, lastly what how about this uh, design of this in homogeneous systems, uh, how do you handle those kind of things actually. This is taken from a very old paper by the way which is uh, it appeared in 68 it is a AA journal actually. Uh, this was in connection with a missile guidance problem and all. So, I will not, uh, we will see that in exclu exclusive uh, lecture probably about, uh, I mean using LQR theory for various missile guidance strategies and all that. So, this part of the application I will not talk about, but the formulation let us see actually, generic. So, this is what I was talking, x dot equal to ax plus bu plus c now. Okay. That means, uh, even though x and u are going, going to 0, that is still not good because x dot equal to c that means, there is a finite amount of rate for which the trajectory will start deviating again actually. Okay. So, how do you assure that the state uh, trajectory x of t should go to 0 in this case and stay at 0 also basically. Okay. So, how do you how do you do that? The cost function is also same, I mean you have this uh, standard cost function where the standard uh, conditions hold good actually, S f and q has to be positive semi definite r has to be positive definite. So, those uh, those expressions should remain correct actually. 
Now, performance index uh, to minimize turns out to be something like this, okay, half of x f transpose s f x f plus all this okay. and then the path constant turns out to be like this. Okay. I mean we are going back to this uh, the summary of this uh, formulation, we have this cost function and we have this path constraint. Okay. Boundary conditions are again standard thing. So, we will uh, go back to the necessary conditions of optimality here okay, and see what is going on here actually. So, with this with this we can we can put this you can uh, we see that this is our phi, this is our L and all sort of things. So, we can have a phi and we can have a Hamiltonian okay, which is L plus lambda transpose F. Now, F is A x plus B u plus C that is the difference actually. Okay. State equation is also slightly different which is A x plus B u plus C again. Okay. Co-state equation remains to be same because once you take derivative all the C does not count actually. So, that becomes 0. So, the co-state equation remains same and similarly the optimal control equation will also remain same. Boundary condition will also remain same, but the state equation will have a, a bias actually. Okay, see. Okay, so, just to see that I mean just to see what is going on here. Okay, what we disc what we had taken earlier we just observed this and this happened to be a homogeneous dynamics. So, we took this lambda as a linear function of x actually. Okay. We will also do very similar thing here, but uh, with the addition of k of t. Okay. So, lambda of t is nothing but p times x plus k basically. Okay. So, this this has to be there. Now, lambda dot is nothing but p dot times x plus x times I mean p times x dot plus k dot actually. Okay. So, p is like this and then x dot is nothing but that x dot is x plus v u plus c. So, you put it back here plus k dot okay. and then you have this u okay, u is nothing but that minus r inverse v transpose lambda. So, put it back here okay, plus p c coming here and k dot and lambda dot is nothing but uh, q x uh, minus q x minus a transpose lambda, but lambda is nothing but that p times x plus k t this time. Okay. So, minus q x minus this a transpose not p x, but p x plus k because of that. Okay. So, do the similar algebra very similar algebra just be aware that wherever lambda is there you have to substitute p x plus k not, not just p x actually. Okay. So, we do that and then ultimately it turns out to be something like this and again this uh, because it is true for all sort of combination of x and things like that. Okay. So, let me see a little bit mistake here probably. Okay, there is a small type error again looks like which is uh, okay, probably minus of that actually missing here. Okay. Everything is taken to the right hand side actually. So, you have this uh, k dot okay, or okay, this is plus I think okay, not minus. Okay. Everything is taken to the right hand side basically. Okay. So, k dot is there. So, k dot Okay, then a transpose p coming minus a transpose p will go to positive side and things like that. So, okay, a transpose k is there. Okay, so this is minus sign which will go to this right hand side will become positive and all that. So, all these things are there. So, now here what you what you say we can tell that okay, this coefficient has to be 0 and this coefficient also has to be 0. Okay, that means we land up with some sort of a Ricard equation which is coming from here. This is actually a Ricard equation plus it is very close to Ricard equation some other differential equation we call that as auxiliary equation actually. Okay. So, this two equation has to be satisfied simultaneously. Okay. How about the boundary condition we can again go back to the final condi condition like that and see that okay, P of T f can take the same boundary condition as earlier and K of T f happens to be 0. Okay. It is also uh, commensurate with this in the because lambda of T f is something like K of T f here. But lambda of tf is nothing but sfxf. Okay, so there is no bias term there. So k of t k of tf happens to be zero actually. So in other words, we have two sets of matrix differential equations: one in terms of p dot, and another in terms of k dot actually. So in the corresponding boundary condition, say one is p of tf is sf, and one is k of tf is zero basically. Okay, so using these two boundary condition and these two differential equation, you can propagate it backwards again store the um, I mean solutions and then start using it actually. Okay, so, and the control solution happens to be finally like this minus r inverse v transpose lambda and lambda happens to be again you if you see this lambda is nothing but p times x times uh, p times x plus k times c and so this is uh, ultimately like that. And here you can actually observe some little bit crucial information 
that after x goes to 0, okay, you still have a bias term actually, remember k, k is there actually, okay. right, after x goes to 0, u equal to this term minus this term actually, okay. even if x goes to 0, because k, k, if k goes to 0, then, then okay, we have this uh, u also goes to 0, but k need not go to 0. Okay. So, then you have this, uh, I mean, bias control sort of thing actually and which is common, I mean, which is uh, kind of uh, compatible also, because uh, you have a, uh, you have a constant forcing function x dot equal x plus b u plus c. So, there is a forcing function sort of thing is there, which is operating on the system to kind of make it deviated away from 0 sort of thing. Okay. So, for to nullify that, we have a constant, constant control also coming back to here. Okay. So, it turns out that these two quantities will nullify each other and make, make sure that x dot is 0. But that does not happen naturally, remember that. We have, we need a bias control to make it happen. So, it is a force equilibrium sort of ideas actually. Okay. So, this is what is written here. This, this part of the controller offsets the continuous disturbance actually. Okay. You can also think of this as a continuous disturbance acting on the system. Okay. Something like a crosswind or something constant crosswind and all that if it is there in aircraft dynamics, then we can think of C, the constant bias term is acting on that actually. It tries to deviate it constantly away and hence you have to apply your control system, system surface like rotor reflection and things like that to a kind of not to allow the system to get influenced by this constant uh, deviation actually or constant disturbance force. All right, so these are all possible do and we saw many things uh, in this lecture. We saw stability behavior, we saw minimum cost function, then we saw extension of uh, this LQR theory to various uh, systems, uh, I mean various possibilities essentially. And then we also saw this, uh, I mean uh, inhomogeneous system design and how do you handle that and all that. So, with that I will stop this lecture. Thank you. Bye.